Okay, so today I was given a Yamaha golf cart and the operator said they were driving it and it seemed almost like if a transmission in a car was slipping where it would hesitate and kind of buck and jump a little bit. The uh, Also, the battery was dead on it. So while they were driving this thing, um, for some reason the battery is not charging, but they would eventually get it going again and then it would buck and slip and then it would die on them. They said they think it's the clutch and they just want to replace the clutch, which depending on which clutch it is on the cart, you have a primary and a secondary. You're looking anywhere from as low as $300 for your secondary clutch, but the primary clutch, you're more on the upscale of six, seven, eight hundred dollars so we don't want to jump to the clutch right away. So, but I checked out the cart, and I always like to look at the easy stuff first, and I'll show you what I found out. We'll take a walk over here. Oh, grab my flashlight here. So, if you look up here, it's a little bit of a mess. It's almost like somebody had done some work on this before. And if you look at that, your carburetor there is separated from the block. I don't even know how this thing was running, but that explains why it's jumping all over the place. You're sucking in all this air and debris, and it's barely touching the block here. So you can see it's got a real fine gap there. Again, I don't know how, uh, this cart was even running. But what we're gonna do is slide this carburetor. I gotta shut the light off. I don't know if you can see it. But we're gonna slide all this back together. And there's two bolts. I gotta get my light again. There's two bolts that will. Let's see. Yeah, one goes on there, or two nuts. One's missing there, and in the back here, it's hard to see, but there's two nuts that are supposed to be holding that on. They're nowhere to be around. So we're just gonna slide that whole assembly back together um, after we clean it out, of course, because I can't imagine how much debris and stuff got sucked up there, but we're gonna take that carburetor out and just clean everything because you get dirt and debris sucked into that motor, which they all, they may already have, then you're going to run into problems with the uh, the motor itself. The piston's going to have all this dirt and stuff in there, and you're just going to score up the whole engine block, and then that's it for the machine after that. So hopefully it didn't get that bad yet. But that's all it was. Simple look underneath. The carburetor was, I guess the nuts had vibrated loose and fell off. Therefore, the carburetor was coming apart from the motor, and that was what was giving you the bucking because the machine was taking in all that air and sucking in dirt. I had already started taking the air cleaner off, but to get to this carburetor, it's pretty simple. You got these little clips on the side here. Um, can't see it here, but there's these little clips that hold this air filter on here. You're just going to unclip them. They go all the way around the air filter, and you're going to pull up your cap. Your air filter is going to be there, and that is filthy as expected. And you're gonna have another element right here and you'll also find back here there's gonna be a bolt that was right in there that I took out already a bolt that goes in there and another bolt there so you're gonna take those two bolts out and then the carburetor underneath as you saw already had the bolts missing it's down there it's already loose so this you you got to kind of lift up on this lift straight up and then slide it sideways to lift that up. Now that's the part that connects to the carburetor there. And there's our carburetor, which you can see, let me hold this up, was just kind of sliding back and forth there because the two nuts that go on there, you can see the, the bolts sticking out somewhat 
that was just sliding around so to get that off we're gonna have to disconnect all this linkage we will uh, also disconnect our fuel line which is going to be down here Let's see if I can get this down here right there there's a fuel line going into the bottom of the carburetor first things first on this throttle cable it extends over here this is a pin with a cotter pin at the bottom of it so you want to pull that ugh, set that down there pull that little pin out this should just slide right up and you can take that right off of there all right and then you're going to want to take this Phillips head screwdriver out take this bracket up and free that cable Alright, so once you have your cables disconnected here from these two, you should be able to get clear access to your fuel line now. So you want to slide this off. Right, come on. Come on. There we go. Alright, so now you can pull this up. And there's your bottom fuel line right there. So you're going to want to get pliers, kind of crimp that pin together, slide it back, pull that hose off, get yourself a bucket down there on the ground, or find yourself a screw or some type of plug to stick into this hose if you want to save your gas. In, the, in this case, I don't want to save any of this gas because this carburetor was so loose on there. There is so much dirt and filth on this thing, it's going to get a full bath. So... I am just going to put a bucket on the ground. I'm going to drain all this out. Don't want any of what's in this tank um, or in this carburetor going back through this system. We're going to start refresh everything. So, all right. Um, we are going to have to take this cable off here so we can get this carburetor cleaned up. This has a little lock washer on it, a little lock pin. Uh, Basically what you want to do is you can take a screwdriver, flathead, and there's little grooves on this washer here. You can stick the corner of your screwdriver in, Let's see if I can do this with one hand here. And you want to kind of pry up, it's hard with one hand here. It's starting to come up. There it goes. Uh, and we're on the ground. And we lost it on the ground. Alright, so with that pin out of the way, you can now slide this cable up and out of that groove there. <coughs> and then which should pretty much give us full access to this whole carburetor once that fuel line's off. Alright, fuel line's off. Carburetor's out. You can see the filth on this thing. So this one's going in the parts washer. Yeah, tripping a little bit of fuel there. Alright. Next. This here should slide right off. This is where your gasket is. Um, it looks like there's a little bit. I apologize for the really bad angles here. It's just really hard to get into these spots. But. That gasket there, you can see, is ripped at the bottom. So, if you have a good gasket, be very gentle taking this off. But, this one's ripped, and we're going to take it off gently anyway, in case we need to sacrifice it. But pretty confident that I will have this gasket. But, there's the gasket there. And then this carburetor backing plate here should just slide right off, like so. And pretty dirty as well. That's going to get a bath along with the carburetor. And that is the inside of the motor there. Again, it's a 
probably going to be difficult to see there. But there's a lot of dirt and debris that had probably been taken in there. So we're going to get an airline and try to blow some of that out as well. And that's it. So right now we're going to just go on to dipping that carburetor into the uh, parts washer. Spraying it down with some carb cleaner. And uh, focus on getting that carburetor as clean as we can. And then we're going to bolt it back up and hope that this sucker uh, rides nice and it solves the problem and saves them a ton of money. So I'm not going to film uh, the carburetor being cleaned, but um, that would be a whole separate video in itself on how to dismantle the carburetor and clean it out. But I need to get this job done quick, so I'm going to go clean that up and then throw this thing back on. All right. So as you can see, I put our original bolts back on. Again, this was the source of the problem. These had vibrated off. There was no bolts. As you see, I have two new nuts on there, holding this carburetor nice and tight now. Now this, if you remember, this was the original source of the problem. There was no nuts. They vibrated off, which was allowing this carburetor to slide back and forth on those bolts which is telling me that's why this thing was bucking and hesitant and at sometimes not running at all, all depending on where the carburetor was at at that point. If it was closer to the motor, if it had bounced closer, maybe it started running because it closed the air gap. But when they hit a bump and this carburetor shifted to the side, they probably let some air in and the thing would die. Anyway, that's my diagnosis. Don't know if it's gonna work, but we're gonna lower the sucker down as long as the uh, battery is charged, we should be able to take it for a spin and see if I just saved them six, seven, or eight hundred dollars. All right, the moment of truth. Put this thing in reverse here. Let's see if it moves. It's moving. That's a good sign. Very good sign. Alright, let's see how fast this baby can go. One of the benefits of the job get to drive around some really cool stuff. Well, definitely fix the problem. Not hesitating or anything. So what could have been a very expensive job turned out to be two carburetor nuts. I'm sure they'll be happy.